Got some new fan art for you. So I was watching the August 2018 JW Broadcasting episode, and I couldn't help but to react to it. I know I have a lot of people who have never been involved with Jehovah's Witnesses, so let me explain. For those of you who don't know what JW Broadcasting is, it's this monthly TV show the Watchtower Society puts out. They give company-wide updates, and they reveal new light and all that stuff. So let's take a look at the August 2018 edition of JW Broadcasting. Let's get into it. So before we actually take a look at the video, I just wanted to go into a little more detail about the program and who hosts it. When I was a Jehovah's Witness, I didn't know who the governing body members were, but I knew they were special. I knew they were basically like prophets. They were getting direction from Jehovah and all that stuff. I left in 2008. Since then, they got the bright idea to put themselves in front of a camera. They decided to reveal themselves to the religion. I think ultimately that was a really bad idea for them. I assume they were hoping it would improve their image and make people more trusting of their decisions. That may be true, but it definitely opened them up to harsher criticisms too. When you have a wide audience, there will most definitely be somebody in that audience who's critical of what you have to say, and can drive it home even easier than before. Here's a good example of how their face reveal kind of f***ed them over. When they were brought before the Australian Royal Commission to answer for the child abuse cover-ups, some of the governing body members themselves had to testify, and they outright lied under oath. Or, at the very least, they twisted the truth into a knot. And people saw that. That would be bad enough. But to then see those same individuals go up to a podium or appear on TV as some authority, as some mouthpiece for God, that's disconcerting. People don't like it. They could see the hypocrisy coming from them a lot easier when they could put a face to it and hear the words coming directly from their mouths. So I think overall what they did was actually smart revealing their faces like that, but it's dangerous. If they aren't careful, then it can completely destroy them. Anyways, the governing body member doing this episode of JW Broadcasting is called Stephen Lett, and in a minute you'll notice his really odd tone of voice. The theme for this month's program is appreciating our gifts and men. Now, I've given this a lot of thought, and I'm pretty sure he's faking it. I think he's doing the voice on purpose. Here's why. I mentioned this in another video recently. Might have been in one of my podcasts. But when I went to the SSA convention, I got to meet Bart Campolo. I talked to him, and it was super interesting. Really, really nice guy. And then he got on stage and gave a talk, and his demeanor completely flipped. He would exaggerate his words and movements, he would drag them out more, and it really drew you in. You remembered everything he said. Now, in the case of Stephen Lett, Do you not take pleasure in receiving a colorful but tasteful 100% silk tie? Or you sisters, do you not delight in being given an exquisite, charming silk scarf? I think he's faking it. I think he's putting on a show to get people interested in the conversation. It's really not a bad idea. I don't think I could do it. It just isn't my style. But it's pretty interesting. Anyways, I've wasted enough time talking about all that. Let's get into the JW Broadcasting episode. Do you not take pleasure in receiving a colorful but tasteful 100% silk tie? Or you sisters, do you not delight in being given an exquisite charming silk scarf? But what if you took that silk tie or silk scarf and used it to polish your shoes? How do you think the giver of your gift would feel if he saw you using his gift in that way? Obviously, it would be misuse and disrespect for the gift and would insult the giver. What is the point of our illustration? Well, Jehovah and Jesus have given us a fine, well-chosen gift in the form of the elders. But as we will discuss, all of us must make sure that we always show appreciation and respect for this divine provision. Wow. Okay, that took an unexpected turn. I thought he was going to say the gift of life or something, but no, he's saying the elders are a gift from God. Honestly, I'm not super sure what to say about that. We should be thankful for a bunch of line managers who enforce family separation and cover up pedophilia cases. We should thank God for these people who, wittingly or not, ruin people's lives. 
who enforced the orders of eight board members in New York, who are completely disconnected from the people under them? I don't know, that doesn't sound like something to be thankful for. What if the gift you receive is patronizing and does real damage to your life or the lives of your friends? Should we be thankful for it then, or should we return it? Should we throw it out? They're saying we need to accept any gift we're given. If we reject something that's actively harmful to our lives, then we're not bad people by default. When they shove it down our throats, telling us to be thankful for it, they're just embarrassing themselves. But now, let's move to a vital question. How can we show, demonstrate, that we do deeply respect and appreciate these dear brothers? The first way by wholeheartedly cooperating with them. Please turn to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 17. And this scripture describes how deep our cooperation should be. Verse 17, be obedient to those who are taking the lead among you and be submissive for they are keeping watch over you as those who will render an account, so that they may do this with joy and not with sighing, for this would be damaging to you. Notice, we are told to be obedient. Clearly, this means that we're supposed to comply with or obey what they tell us. Of course, that would be with a proviso, unless they tell us to do something that is unscriptural. And of course, that would be extremely rare. Except for the fact that they decide what's scriptural and what isn't. It's like the Catholic Church centuries ago making things dogma at will. If they say it's scriptural, then it's scriptural, because they have the correct interpretation of the Bible. Now, I know they're talking about people who are using their power as an elder to get what they want. But the Watchtower Society does this all the time and doesn't face any repercussions because people are taught to just shut up and do what they're told. So how is somebody supposed to tell when they're supposed to shut up and do what they're told, or if something they're being told to do is unscriptural? Do you shut your brain off or not? They almost always lean on the side of shut your brain off. I'm honestly kind of surprised he even mentioned the caveat about not doing stuff if it's unscriptural. They probably just added it to clear themselves of criticism or potential legal trouble. Realistically, their members can't do both. They don't even try. We're also told to be submissive. This includes the attitude with which we're to be obedient, doing so with a yielding, positive attitude. Once again, trying to mold people's personalities into what they want them to be. Trying to get them to shut their brains off. That single sentence about disregarding something that's unscriptural falls to the side as he dives right into this whole be submissive, be obedient, do it with a positive attitude bit. I've mentioned how they mold your personality before, but here it is right in front of us. We're listening to it. This video is part of a concerted effort to crush the will and independence of every Jehovah's Witness on the planet. Would it be possible to be obedient, but not submissive? Well, what if we said, okay, I'll do what the elders suggest. I don't want to do it, but I'll do it. We would be obedient, but not submissive. However, Jehovah tells us to display both of these qualities. We should be obedient and submissive even if what the elders are asking us to do is not the best, most efficient way to do something. I'm not the only one seeing the ridiculousness of this, am I? Am I the only one who's a little scared by the direction he's going? He's saying even if you don't think it's the most efficient way, even if you don't want to, you still have to do it. And not only that, but you have to be happy when you do it. You can't just do something they want. You have to enjoy yourself while you do it. Molding that personality. This is seriously scary stuff. This isn't a social club. They aren't trying to plan a party with them. They aren't being paid. They can't quit this job. This is a massive multinational organization molding people's personalities to make them say and do whatever they want them to do without asking questions and to do it with a smile on their face. And if they don't, then they lose their family members and every friend they've ever had. 
Does anybody really wonder if Jehovah's Witnesses would take an unknown pill if the Watchtower Society passed them out to everybody? This isn't new. This has been going on for a very long time. They've been doing this since I was a little kid. They formed my personality to be like this from birth. I recovered from it mostly, but lots of people never recovered. Sometimes I hear people who say, you know, it gives a good sense of morals. It gives you a good temperament, a good personality. I don't see anything wrong with that. No, they're making you malleable. They're making it so you just bend over and do whatever somebody tells you to do with a smile on your face. They're discouraging doubt and critical thinking for 8.4 million people around the world. This is so insanely dangerous and scary. The way the Watchtower Society operates allows them to come up with and justify any decision from the Bible. Just look at this one set of Bible contradictions. Are you supposed to kill or are you not supposed to kill? According to Exodus 20:13, it says, thou shalt not kill. But in the same book, Exodus 22:18, just a couple chapters over, it says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Do we kill witches, or do we not kill at all? Deuteronomy 5.17 says, Thou shalt not kill, again. But Numbers 15.32 and 35 say, Now while the sons of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering wood on the Sabbath day. And a verse later, in verse 35, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, The man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. So which is it? Do we listen to Exodus chapter 20 or Exodus 22? Deuteronomy or Numbers? The problem is that there's a verse to justify anything in the Bible. If there isn't a verse for it, they can string them together and come up with a revelation. Pretend to prophesy something new, like they did with the 1914 teaching or the second generation teaching. There's no limit to what they can justify with the Bible. They're dangerous. They're completely out of control and they're ruining people's lives. We need to stop this kind of thing. We need to help people find their way out. They're losing money fast, and they're gonna start getting desperate. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. FYI, I officially went full-time with YouTube two days ago. I quit my day job. I've already seen a swell of support from it, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. If you support me on Patreon, you'll guarantee that I'll get to continue doing this kind of thing. And you'll get a special role on my Discord that'll let you into a private channel to talk to me and other supporters as much as you want. So join my Patreon, join my Discord, check out my podcast and science channels, and don't forget the secret link of the day. Thanks for watching, guys.